Hello Internet! Today we have this 5070 Ti from MSI with a BIOS switch set to gaming mode. Imagine your wife had a switch like that. Ah! Ah! This would be a great dad joke, but I don't have kids or wife, so if you're laughing, well, good for you. I don't remember what's wrong with it, so I'll just go straight into getting her naked and see what's under the hood. There we have it. Not entirely sure why the cooler is so massive, while the board is so tiny. Ooh, that's kind of small. Yikes. First, let's figure out what's wrong with this thing, using a multimeter that has successfully repaired well over a thousand graphics cards of all kinds. All kinds of multimeter. Nothing in 12, nothing in 3, PEX is binding, nothing in 5, Nothing on LEDs, nothing on 1.8, got a click out of memory, a false gate on 1.2, and everything else is pretty much dead short because my multimeter simply can't read it. So let's turn this thing on and see what it does. For this, I'll be using my DIY tester thingy. Not available in stores anywhere in the US, Canada, or pretty much anywhere in the world, so don't bother looking for it, you it yourself. This announcement has been brought to you by 43 year virgin. In case you didn't know, 5070Ti's and 50A's are kind of a psycho. They need a lot of amps to turn on, but not a lot to stay on. So with the 4 amp limit set, it only pulls about 2.6 amps, and the power consumption is not stable. If I increase the limit, it will power on as normal, but it'll eventually jump to 5.6 amps, as if it's trying to play a game. Which if you haven't noticed, it doesn't. Not yet anyway. So this is clearly not normal, and the common cost for this, and I say common because I've seen this exactly one time, and that time is today, huh? is the connection between the core and the board. And no wonder, we have no display. You can hear my motherboard is going nuts with the beeps. And the dock on the screen is proof that there's definitely a problem. Linux says the device is not found. Why? There are no cracks on the board, some signs of physical damage, but nothing that would seem significant at first. In reality, however, a small dent on the card could be a sign of a huge disaster. We just have to rule everything out before we go crazy with the reball. So I verified all the power stages and everything is operating as expected. The only oddity I see is that it's pulling well over 5 amps while doing nothing. In any case, I think we've seen enough today. So let's reroll this thing and see if that helps.
Okay, reboil is done. The Chinese home fighter gave me a green light. The data line tester gave me a pass. And oh look, the power consumption is now normal. Aha! Gotcha, bitch! You didn't expect that to be fixed with the reball. <laughs> and that's where the good news ends, because the card still does not post. You suck! And then I had an idea. What if we try a different BIOS? Will that help? Nope. Same thing. First suspect will be the PEX reset logic. We should have an output on this pin, if these two are powered. And there. We have an output, so the logic works, and yet, it still does not detect. Testing the BIOS chip, I'm getting the Hello. signal sent to the BIOS chip, but the chip is ignoring it. I thought maybe this chip isn't currently selected, so I tried another chip, but it's doing the exact same thing. The oscillator here is working great, indicating that the core is properly soldered to the board. And yet, some suggested to just solder the bias switch pins together to rule out the bad switch, and I've seen that not long ago, but that didn't help. Then I went to do a manual data line check, clock packs reset and all the good stuff, and everything seemed okay. I even resolder the top end of the capacitors to make sure that they are connected, but nothing seemed to help. That's when I decided to use the forbidden riser. This riser routes first data pair to go from the first to sixteenth, and the sixteenth to go to first. And OMG, it posted. That's what I'm talking about. That's why he's the goat. The goat. But why? Why doesn't it post with a normal riser? Caps on the back are clearly connected to the core, but are they connected to the slot? Looks like they are. Are the capacitors within the specs? Absolutely. So what in the world's going on in here? Maybe a micro crack? I'll reflow these caps and see if that helps. I'll be using the normal riser this time, so if that works, we have a fix. And... There. <laughs> Incredible. A tiny little crack. That's all it was. It took longer to find that than it was to reball the core memory chips. Why, why, why? In any case, it was time to put this thing back together and run some tests. And... At this moment you ask, would I recommend this card? And the answer to that is no, because it only has one fuse on the board. The fuse that can protect your motherboard from exploding, that I call a liability fuse, is there. But the high power connector has no fuse, so they don't care if you burn a hole on the board. 4090s made by MSI were really good, so I guess brand loyalty is not the smartest choice. In any case, the card did work, but would freeze shortly after. I thought maybe more capacitors were partially detached, and I even replaced the first pair, but it didn't help. The system would randomly freeze, as you can tell by the timer. This time, problem was the riser. Plugging the card directly into the motherboard, like that, had no problems, so it finally ran as it should have. That would be it for this easy repair, and if this video was entertaining and educating, please consider liking the video, subscribing for more, and don't forget to comment below. Goodbye!